Kevin L. Jackson. I'm here in San Francisco. And I'm here to upgrade my reality with Dr. Elette Boyle from the CIS Lab. Thank you very much for taking the time to come uh, see us. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, CIS Lab, that seems to be very important. What is it and what do you do there? Well, I'm a bit biased, but I do feel it's very important. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the CIS Lab at NTT Research, uh, yeah. this is CIS, it stands for Cryptography and Information Security. Oh, secrets. That's all the secrets are. Lots right? of secrets, yes. Yeah. So we're protecting <laughs> the secrets. <laughs> so, my particular work area is an area that's known as secure multi-party computation. One of the things that in computing or just in ICT in general is privacy protection. With all the information that's out there on the networks and I mean I use social media, many people use social media and there's a, a, a lot of bad things can be done with your data on social media on the, these networks. So are you there to get my data or to protect my data? I'm, I'm here to try to protect your data, but allow the, the companies that, that need it uh -huh. to get just the information that's acceptable and that they need. So maybe I'll give you an example of this. Yeah, because I mean, you, you put all this data out there. Yes. Uh, and every company wants all of your data, no, no matter how minute, you know. For sure, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> when did you go to the toilet yesterday? Yes, I know. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of the things with the pandemic, they actually were monitoring where, what was coming in the toilet. <laughs> no, we're laughing about this, but yeah. this is completely serious. Uh -huh. Exactly yeah, yeah, this sort right, of thing. Right. So indeed, as you said, companies want as much data about consumers as possible. Yeah. Uh, to the extent that it becomes too much. Uh -huh. Customers don't want to be tracked. I mean, I, I value my privacy. Yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. the world knowing when I go to the toilet. <laughs> right, right. And, and I think that they're sort of at odds in some sense. Okay. Uh, and what we're here to do is to try to, to design cryptographic solutions to help with this fight almost okay. uh, between uh, the privacy concerns and the data requirements. So for example, right. Uh, we, we talked about <laughs> going to the toilet. Yeah. I guess this has become a theme now of this interview. <laughs> Let's go with it. Go with it. <laughs> so, for example, it, I don't want my specific individual information being collected. Right. This is my, my privacy. This uh -huh. is my right. On the other hand, I don't mind if my sort of aggregate information across entire companies and across larger scales of people yeah that maybe it's very useful to know the averages of, you know, what, how long people how long, are. Yeah, or, how long people stay. Exactly, right? or information, okay. we'll keep it more broad. <laughs> it actually would help in designing a building. Exactly. How many restrooms would you exactly. need in a building? And that's actually good for me. I would be happy to give my piece with, amongst an aggregate uh -huh. for these benefits. Okay. So what we're trying to do is to try to understand and design solutions for this that can we somehow allow companies, uh, or, or even broader, yeah. to collect just aggregate information while never ever learning the individual data of specific mm -hmm. people. So they can collect all the data, but they can only see or access the aggregate, so they can't pull out exactly. what they, I do. They, and this is also good for them, to be honest. Okay. That, uh, especially with a lot of privacy regulations, yes. that as soon as they have my private data, they, they also have to protect they it. They have to spend a lot of exactly. money. Exactly, they to have to spend it. a lot of money. And in many cases, they don't really care when I go to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want <laughs> that this to. is not the information that they want. Okay. So here, exactly with these solutions, what will happen is that they never ever learn that information. They only learn the aggregates. Has this been surprising to you, the, 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 the work or the importance of this aggregate process? The, the beauties of foundational research yeah. is that I'm constantly surprised. <laughs> In a good way, a okay, very good okay, way. Okay. <laughs> So I, I think whenever you hear this, it, it sounds very surprising. Yeah. How could you possibly hope to learn this information you know, without ever touching yeah, the individual I, data? Yeah, the individual data, and right, right. Exactly, and this is sort of the magic of cryptography. These are the, the technological solutions and protocols that we design. How do you do that? Do you have secrets you can tell us? 
Ah, well. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me maybe give a, a high-level idea okay. of, of how some of our solutions work. Okay, that'd be so good. So the idea is that, say I have my private information, my yeah. private data, we give some way for that data to be split into pieces, hmm. okay? Such that if I give somebody just one of these pieces, they don't learn anything about my secret, okay? It just looks like random zeros and ones right, as far right, as they can right. tell. Um, but now there's some way of actually computing on these pieces. So for example, if, if five other people come and split their data into pieces, then whoever's holding all the piece number ones can right. do some operation. Whoever's holding all the piece number twos can do some operation. And now with the resulting values when they come together, will reveal the aggregate information, but never along the process do they do either sign learn the, the, wow. the specific pieces. The, sorry, the, yeah, the my so secret, your, my secret, my secret, secret. information. Exactly. You know, this reminds me of some other technology that people may have heard of, like uh, homomorphic encryption and cryptographic bit splitting, right? See, I did my homework. How ah, is it, well done, how yes. <laughs> <laughs> how is this different? Well, it's actually, so it's quite related, but it is a different technology. Okay. So homomorphic encryption is uh, essentially taking the data, encrypting it, right. and then computing on encrypted data. And uh, so this is sort of an analog of that, exactly, where instead we're taking the data and splitting it into pieces. Mm. There's, there's certainly pros and cons of different approaches. Mm -hmm. One of the benefits of this splitting approach is that by, by splitting, uh, we actually can, can develop very lightweight techniques. So mm. the cost of, of doing the operations of computing on the pieces tends to be much cheaper than computing on in encrypted data. So it costs less you protect your information, but you still deliver the value to society that they need to yes. build the buildings with enough toilets. Yes. <laughs> that's, really, that's really good. What's, what, what do you see is coming next with, with, with your work and, and your research? So I'm, I'm excited to say we have sort of a, a range of, of different goals and different uh, things, milestones, I think, that are going to come forward. Okay. And already some of the techniques I've been discussing mm -hmm. are actually quite close. They're, they're sort of, you know, right tripping over from, <laughs> from the fundamental foundational research to something that, that really can be deployed quite soon, which I'm excited about. Yeah, I can sense your excitement. <laughs> One of the things that seems that NTT has been excited about doing this whole conference is ION. So, and, you know, a fear that many people have around ION is that it's such a powerful ICT infrastructure with, I mean, the low power, the high bandwidth, the, the reduced latency. So anyone can get all of my personal data. So does this, how does this relate to ION? So I think that this is an excellent opportunity exactly for some of these techniques to, to be put into place. Okay. And this is something that we're, we're currently looking into and, uh, you know, be happy to, to report to you afterward <laughs> as progress. Yeah, as progress. Stay tuned gonna, for more. Exactly, huh? exactly. <laughs> we're here at, um, you know, Upgrade Reality. So, you know, when is what you're doing going to upgrade my personal reality the, yeah, <laughs> the next time you have to use the bathroom yeah, <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> so uh so I, I mentioned a little bit that some of the technology i think is going to be be quite soon okay. that you'll see um, but i do want to mention that, that this is just one example of what some of this technology can do hmm. and i mentioned the very beginning this this broader notion of secure computation yeah um, and this is something that that is is sort of for a future goal that essentially any time you have collections of data that, that's owned by different entities and they don't want to exchange the data, mm -hmm. but they want to learn some kind of global information across that. So you can think about a lot of applications, medical, financial, wow. business needs that will be able to design solutions for, for exactly doing that, that will allow, uh, allow people to learn only certain types of information for example, maybe the average salary across um, 
uh, different companies. Like, this like, is something that actually... Without knowing the individual salary. Yes, yes, okay, exactly. Okay. Or a lot more, you know, more complicated sorts of statistics or things. Uh, you know, eventually being able to run medical research studies, for example, across different hospital data. So this, this is an entire spectrum of, uh, of sort of goals, I would say, that we're, we're continuing to hack away at. And, and I'm really excited that, that in the long run, I think that this technology is going to be tremendously applicable. Well, you know, some of the work you're, you're, you're talking about earlier, I talked to Dr. John Peterson, and he was talking about how they are creating the digital twin of a heart in order to uh, do better, uh, react to better issues with, with the heart around heart attacks. So I can imagine your technology, you could put in data about my heart and aggregate it with data of other people's hearts yes. in order to create uh, better treatments yes. for a heart attack. Is that a good It's Exactly, yes. Oh, well, I can't wait for you to upgrade my reality. So thank you very much, <laughs> well, you're very welcome. for spending some time with us. My pleasure. <laughs>